Good day, everyone. Thank you again for joining. I am Nazmul, your host for the day. We will be starting the webinar now. For today's webinar, Arnob is here with us as the speaker. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the webinar. If you have any question during the webinar, feel free to ask in the Zoom chat. We will be answering them in the QA part of the webinar. Arnob, please take the limelight. Thanks, Nazmul. Am I audible? Yes. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. I'm Arnob. I'm a software engineer at AppScoot. With a bunch of other developers, I'm currently working on the KubeDB project. Today, I'm going to give you an overall update from the MongoDB side of our KubeDB project, what the new features we aim at and what we have done so far. I'm also expecting suggestions and feedback from you for the betterment of our project. Today's uh, webinar, uh, Type it is managing MongoDB with Arbiter on Kubernetes using QMD. In these webinars, now these are the contents I will cover today. At first, I will uh, give you an overall uh, concept of what the MongoDB is, MongoDB Arbiter is, and why booting is uh, so important in MongoDB, uh, and uh, how Arbiter gets combined and works on replica set databases and sharded cluster. Then. I will uh, give you a live demonstration so that when you try hands-on on your own, you can do it easily. And uh, last but not least, there will be a QA session where uh, if you have any question, uh, I will uh, try to uh, answer that. So let's start. To understand Arbiter, first you have to be familiar with the replica set concept of MongoDB. A replica set in MongoDB is a group of a Mongo process that maintain the same data set. The primary goal of a replica sets is redundancy and high availability. And uh, this is the basis of all production. So in the uh, left-hand side, uh, first picture, you can see that here is uh, a three node MongoDB replica set structure where uh, one primary and two secondary takes place. And if uh, a client wants to uh, read write any data, he has to uh, read uh, right from the right on the primary node, but he can uh, read from primary or a secondary. If uh, the read preference is uh, set to uh, primary preferred, he will uh, read from the primary node. And if the preference is set to secondary preferred, he will read from the secondary node. Also, here is the replication process, but in MongoDB uh, replication, it actually replicates the uplock, not the actual data. So uplock is uh, stands for operation log. Uplog is uh, something special kind of depth collection, a fixed size collection that overrides its oldest entries when it reaches its maximum size. So uh, if the client writes into the primary, primary actually uh, writes those uh, records, those operation onto the uplog and this secondary replicates those uplog and executes the same commands as the primary executed. In the uh, second uh, picture, this is uh, from the internal point of view, from the MongoDB side, if uh, some, uh, some node, if he can't get the heartbeat of other node, he can be uh, sure that uh, the, uh, that node is currently not live, or uh, this, this node has been dead. So heartbeat is uh, the main concept to check if the current node is live or not. Now, uh, this is the common structure. Now, let's uh, talk about Arbiter now, as we have uh, familiar, we have got familiar with the replica set structure. In, uh, if we uh, replace one secondary with one Arbiter, this will look like this. What the Arbiter actually is? Arbiter is a member of MongoDB replica set. It doesn't have the copy of data. So here you can see the replication only uh, occurring from primary to secondary, not primary to Arbiter here. And in some, some, some circumstances, if uh, such scenario occurs that uh, when you have a primary and a secondary, but cost constraints prohibit adding another secondary, you may choose to add an arbiter to a replica set. Replica set may have arbiters to add a vote in election. So this is uh, though a priority zero member, so it can't be primary, but it can vote when uh, some, uh, some node has been uh, dead. So arbiters always have exactly one election vote and does allow replica set to have an uneven uh, number of voting members without the overhead of additional uh, member that replicates data. 
and in the fourth picture you can see that uh, here is the common structure primary arbiter and secondary but you can also uh, deploy a delete node hidden node priority zero node these all are types of secondary node but special thing now uh, talk about the election here uh, let's assume a four node mongodb replica set structure where one primary two secondary and one arbiter node they are all syncing with the hardware heartbeat and those secondaries are actually replicating the upload from the primary now if uh, some uh, node get uh, dead or if the primary uh, is not available now an election can take place as well an election can uh, occur for for multiple purposes adding a new node to the replica set can uh, cause an election or if you initialize a replica set now it will cause an election if uh, if you uh, run step down or reconfig something this will uh, again call the election but most common scenario is if uh, some node is unavailable for a uh, certain amount of time so the default is 10 seconds so if some uh, node is uh, unavailable for more than 10 seconds better recall 10 seconds in that case a new election will be occurred and after booting uh, a new primary will be elected so you can see that it is a very useful feature for mongodb so let's talk uh, go to the demonstration part for the demonstration purposes i have already installed the cube db uh, in my local pc so here if you uh, you, you can go in the cubedb.com site so that uh, you can uh, you can see the which fetch features it support and you can also go to the license.issuer.export.com so that you can get a license of kubedb so that uh, you can uh, run uh, deploy the kubedb in cluster here is the hand chart you need to add and uh, i'm using the version kubedb version 2022 uh, may 24 so you need the license here to set and this, this will uh, do all for you so now I am uh, going to deploy this replica set to YML. Here you can see that uh, the name is MGRS, which is in DB namespace. The version is 4.4.6. Replica set name is replica set simple. This is uh, the port template uh, as shown here. This is the port template of uh, primary and secondary nodes uh, ports. There are uh, two replicas, and this is the storage spec. spec. So there will be a PPC with 300 megabit and uh, SSL is required here. So you need to uh, give your uh, issuer here. So I have I have to create a Mongo issuer and with, with the TLS cert and TLS key. Here you can see that. Here the Mongo C issuer I have deferred from the issuer rep. And uh, this is the arbiter spec where I have uh, taken uh, 600 megabytes memory and uh, CPU 600 and the termination is equal. So let's apply this YMAX. Uh, in this uh, here, you can see that uh, I will show you the uh, ports here in the DVM space here. So apply it. Secret has been created. Now I will uh, apply the issuer. The issuer also has been created. Now I can. Replica set. So here is the uh, replica set name MGRS, which is in provisioning state. So let's uh, wait for some time so that it can go to the ready state. In the meantime, I can uh, show you the YML. Yes, this is in the ready state, not ready state. So, okay. This is the YML. And if we uh, go to the resource section of the MongoDB container, here you can see that this is set to 200 megabyte. We have already uh, set that here. So, this is the arbiter is getting ready. 
MongoDB is contained critical state. Let's wait for some time. Okay, now it is uh, ready state. So let's exit into uh, one port. Let's say the first port. Now, as uh, TLS is enabled, so we are just copying the command for Mongo. Here you can see that the user is root, password is uh, that, and the TLS cert file and key file is given, everything. So we are now connected to the replic primary node. So if we run the rs.status to see the status of current replica set, you can see here that there are uh, three member the zero port is the primary first port is the secondary and there is a third port which is arbiter which is uh, of id2 in health one so this is up and running this is the three root port and if we uh, if we now change the resources we have uh, shown here we need to apply uh, ops request. So let's see that. Here you can see a MongoDB ops request. The name is DB scale to uh, scale the, the scale the arbiter ports and replica sets ports vertically. So suppose uh, there was uh, there was 200 MB. So we are setting it to 800, and the arbiter was 600. So we are uh, setting it to at uh, yeah, 300 so we are uh, downgrading the resources for arbiter ports and upgrading uh, the resources for uh, other ports here is the replica set ports resources and this is the arbiter port resources so let's apply this this is the particle scale Here you can see that this is in the progressing state. This particle scale actually uh, evict all the ports one by one. First, it will evict the secondary port, then all the arbiter ports, and then lastly the primary port. So it will evict one by one all the ports. And after uh, restarting, the MongoDB ops request of uh, type particle scale should successful here. So it will take some time to restart. Let's wait for a while. As you can see, this is in a critical space currently. The port is initializing. As the arbitral ports uh, port already uh, restarted, so I can check now the arbitral ports so I mean, if it is uh, get updated or not. The name is MGRS Arbiter 0. There is the arbitral port YML. So if I go to the resource section, here you can see that this is has been updated. So now uh, I'll this is successful. So let's uh, exit into the port again. Okay, I'm just copying the Mongo command. Now, if I run the RS status now, status, here you can see that previously we have uh, shown that the zero port was primary, so and and the first port was secondary. But now, after uh, evicting uh, those uh, those replica ports, the first uh, zero port has become secondary and it has become primary successfully, and all the resources have been updated. We can uh, similarly check the uh, this port resources here. 
it should be updated. Let's see the resources. And here, this is uh, 900 M and the one GB. So we have set this here. So everything is updated. Particle still gets successful. Now we have uh, shown that how to work with arbiters in the arbiter set, uh, replica set. We also showed uh, how to scale up or down the ports, particularly using the MongoDB ops request. Now it's time to uh, talk about the shard. Sharding in MongoDB uh, is a distribute uh, is a method for distributing data across multiple meta machines. MongoDB uses sharding to support deployments with very large data sets and the high throughput operation. It has three types of node. One is Mongoose, second is shard, and third is config server. Uh, shard, this is uh, the actual uh, data bearing node. Each shard contains a subset of the sharded data, and each shard can be deployed as a replica set. So here you can see uh, in the right side of the dotted line, this uh, this shard is a replica set, and this shard also a replica set. So uh, together, these clusters shard hold the entire data. So if uh, if if the client uh, if the cluster has uh, a vast amount of data, the shard actually divides onto multiple uh, section and them and together this cluster hold the entire uh, data set for the cluster but performing queries on the single shirt only return the subset of data so if you if you uh, apply the query in the shard directly you you will not return the whole data but a subset of data so if uh, you want to execute some query the client application has to uh, Perform the query in the Mongoose, and the Mongoose acts as a query router, providing an interface between the client application and the sharded cluster. But Mongoose node uh, doesn't know which shard holds which chunk of data. So to know this, that which shard holds which chunk, chunk of data, to know this, the config server takes this. Config server stores the metadata and configuration settings for the sharded cluster, and the metadata reflects the state and organization for all data and components with the sharded cluster. So the config server knows which data is which which shard. This metadata also includes the list of chunks on every shard and the ranges that define the chunks. So to execute a certain query, client application will connect to the Mongoose node. The Mongoose node will ask the config server to get the current shard uh, to work with. And so the client get the cluster level data, not the subset of data. Now I will apply uh, this sharded cluster YML. Here you can see the name is MGSH in DB space. Uh, I am actually using uh, the default set set settings for Arbiter. So I have set uh, it to null. And here is the three types of group, config server, mongoose, and shard. Here is the config server uh, YML. You can see that uh, this is the port template, three replicas, and this is the PVC storage. The mongoose has two replicas very simple structure here and this is the shard the shard there is two shard and each has two replicas so uh, there as there are arbiter enabled so there will be three replicas actually two uh, two one primary one secondary and one arbiter i also uh, set a config secret and this config with using this config secret i have uh, added the max incoming connection for all the replica set ports uh, to 10,000. So let's create this. Uh, by the way, before creating this, I can delete the previous replica. Simply delete it. Okay. Now, uh, as you see, the first I have to create the custom config secret. Let's create it. The name is mongodb.conf. And secret name is custom config. Now I can apply the shard value. 
here uh, the sharp is provisioning. Uh, let's calculate how many ports will be created. Uh, there are uh, three replicas for config server, two for mongoose, three to five, and uh, there are uh, two into three. So two arbiters, two into three, six plus five, 11 ports should be uh, created here. As you can see, uh, the config server is uh, already uh, running. Let's exit into one of the shard port. Let's say shard zero. Okay. I should uh, wait some time to get it ready. It will first create the config server, then the shards, and uh, lastly the mongoose. We uh, get inside into the DVD. As the root is there. This is the primary. RS root status should give us correct status. So everything is okay. This is the primary, this is the secondary, and this is the arbiter. Everything has been added. Now I can uh, run another command, the admin command. To uh, see the current configuration. The command is get cmd line ops. This will uh, give the current configuration. Here you can see the max incoming connection is 10,000. So uh, this is correctly said that we have uh, set the max incoming connection to 10,000. And uh, this, uh, this secret has been, uh, can be found here. This is the secret actually. So yes, the MongoDB is uh, in the ready state. By the way, let me uh, create another uh, config secret as uh, I want to uh, change the current uh, configuration of mongodb and apply mongodb ops request of type reconfigure as uh, this can uh, take a good amount of time to uh, become uh, successful we are applying it early so let's just apply it and i will uh, go into the ymls then i will show you all the ymls in a while the name is uh, and the secret name is log config. Okay. Let's apply the reconfigure. The reconfigure has been applied. Uh, by the way, let's see uh, what the YMLs we have just applied. This is the uh, reconfigure YML. Here you can see the API version is uh, ops.qpd.com, which is in the beyond alpha on state. The kind is from the ops request and the name is reconfigured in DB. The type is reconfigured and the database ref is mgsh, which is the name is uh, this mgsh here. And uh, this is the configuration we want to set for the running sharded MongoDB cluster. Here is the shard config configuration. We uh, actually did set the max incoming connection to 10,000. Now we want to set this to 22,000 for each of the shard ports. And to, uh, to trick the arbiter uh, ports configuration, we will apply uh, this configuration so, so that uh, all, the logs or the, all the logs of arbiter ports can be shown in the data slash config slash log.txt file. And uh, with this configuration, I have uh, just created this secret. We, you have al already seen that. I have just created this secret. And uh, this is the reference. So the name is log config. So we have just referred the config secret for arbiter here. So uh, after uh, it gets successful, this MongoDB of request of type reconfigure, 
we should uh, actually uh, see the all the arbiter logs in this one if everything is successful let's see what is happening here here you can see that uh, the mongodb configure is still in a progressing state so let's uh, wait for a while by the way kubedb uh, is actually uh, currently support uh, many types of ops request like vertical ops request reconfigure ops request those two i have already shown uh, also horizontal ops request uh, volume expansion then uh, restarting upgrading the version these are also supported you can uh, also uh, there is also type of reconfigure tls so so that you can uh, just uh, rolling update the your issuer time out so that you can get connected to the tv the tls configuration will be changed by the reconfigure tls so these are the type you can uh, check out in the kubedb.com site as uh, this ops request takes a good amount of time to get successful uh, to keep this webinar compact we just uh, showed the vertical scale for the replica set database and uh, the reconfigure type uh, for the shard cluster okay this is uh, still in the progressing state uh, it will evict all the ports one by one and uh, after it gets successful we can uh, see our updated configuration in the in, inside the db the arbiter port is currently uh, restarting okay running place okay now uh, this is successful so if i now again exit into the port and use uh, the mongo command okay now if i run the admin command we should uh, see that the max incoming request has been set to 22000 the command is get cmd line ops and this is one here you can see that the max incoming connection request has been updated so if you uh, now exit into the arbiter port okay now if i run the same command we should also uh, see that configuration it, this this log here okay here you can see the system log has been set so we have uh, tweaked the configuration of the arbiter port we have also tweaked the configuration uh, of the secondary port so if i just exit from here and get the configuration file this is the configuration has been set here and we should uh, see uh, all the log in this file path so get the log here is all everything so everything uh, gets successful and uh, all the reconfiguration uh, has been occurred so this was the demonstration part And we also have uh, plans to add some amazing uh, MongoDB features to KubeDB. Uh, suppose uh, we can add delete secondary node. Delete member, uh, such member, those contains the copies of replica set data set. However, the delete member's data set reflects an earlier or delete state. For example, if, you, uh, if your current time is 11 p.m. and a uh, member has a delay of two hour, the deployed uh, delete MongoDB has no operation mode than 9 p.m. So, uh, this will uh, just a historical snapshot kind of we can add support for a uh, hidden member uh, which is uh, actually maintains the copy of the primary data set but is invisible for the client applications 
and uh, lastly we can also add the directly uh, adding or removing the arbiter using the horizontal scaling currently we can uh, we can add or remove arbiter uh, through the replica set but if we uh, suppose there is an already running arbiter depth in MongoDB, now you want to remove an arbiter just just the arbiter not the whole replica set uh, from that tv cluster by applying horizontal scaling in that uh, in that case this can be helpful so this was uh, all from me uh, if you have any question uh, please go on. Um, yeah thanks uh, arnob so i have a quick question so what version of uh, mongodb are supported for uh, the arbiter feature uh, MongoDB Arbiter uh, actually uh, supported for from 4.2. So uh, all the upgraded 4.2, 4.4.6, 5.3, all of them are supported. And uh, does it uh, work for the, um, the in-memory data store, the in-memory storage feature, uh, storage engine of MongoDB? Uh, yes, yes, because uh, the Arbiter actually uh, not a, a data, data storage. So you can uh, just uh, deploy it on the fly. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks.